Okay, here we go. Our photo essay is called Forever Young. Are we condemning our children to a lifetime as children? Before we begin, we want you to think about your life as a child and remember what it was like because we're going to talk about children today and children of the past. I was born in 1972. When I was born, summer outside, summer days meant playing outside, hours at a time with little contact with my parents. That was my childhood. My sister and I made up games and stories and were completely reliant on each other to make our own fun. Some of our friends took special lessons or classes in the summer, but that was rare and our parents couldn't afford that anyway. I always wanted to take gymnastics as a child and I never got the chance because my parents just couldn't afford it and didn't want us to do it. I did take swimming lessons and I was involved in 4-H, but other than that, summers were entirely ours. Um, we worked on the farm and then we also just got to play make-believe and have our own fun. Um, sometimes we saw our parents in the morning for breakfast and didn't see them again until lunch or dinner that night. So my parents divorced when I was two, so I spent a lot of time traveling between their houses and then my grandparents' house. When I was at my dad's, he was pretty relaxed with like boundaries and keeping me at home, so I spent most of my time just wandering the neighborhood. When I was five and six, I would ride my bike to McDonald's, which was like maybe a mile and a half, two miles away, and along some very busy streets on my little six-year-old bike. My mom was pretty much the same, except I had less of an area to explore with her since we lived in apartments until I was six. And then when we lived in an actual neighborhood, I had grown, I, I was just antisocial, so I never made friends. I never really explored. Um, so basically at either house, I was left mostly to my own devices to make my own fun. Spent a lot of it in, inside reading books. At my dad's, I was always outside. I did play softball from the time I was four up until about a year ago. So in the summer, two months of my time, maybe six hours a week, I was in an organized activity. That's it. All right. Parents of the 1970s, of the late 1970s, began to look around for supervised activities for their children, mostly because um, at the end of the 1970s, women went from being mainly stay-at-home moms to having jobs of their own. So they needed to find activities that their children could do. Um, so what happened is they tried to look for activities that children could do during summer vacation. An influx of child classes emerged that were taught and supervised by adults at all times, and they asked children as young as the age of three to follow intricate directions and be set on a rigorous schedule for achievement. This picture is from the 1970s in a dance class, um, and those were some of the first classes that emerged, classes for dance, mostly for girls, although also that saw the first emergence of club baseball, like little leagues, um, in our country at that time as well. What could be wrong, they thought, with about asking children to follow directions under strict supervision? What indeed? There are always consequences for every action. Today, some children spend all the hours of their summer vacations traveling from one supervised activity to the next, with very little time of their own in which to experiment, improvise, and imagine. And that is a problem. In a recent survey that we took of MCHS honor students, 165 students responded. 25% um, of those students claimed that they had attended a daycare or preschool before the age of two. 67% of students attended preschool at least one year prior to kindergarten at age three or four. 96% were involved in more than one organized supervised class or activity during the summer or school year during their elementary years and 99% were involved in at least one activity prior to starting school. One of the students who we interviewed is named Colin Dust. Colin was one of those students who um, said that he had been involved in every kind of activity that he could be, um, and so we wanted to find out a little bit more about what he had to say about being involved as a child, um, an elementary school child. And this is what Colin said. Ball, and I played t-ball as a kid, and I played soccer, so lots of different activities. Was that only during the summer or during the school year, too? 
Um, it was mostly during the summer, but there was some stuff like on weekends, um, uh, weekday practices and whatnot. So. How many times a week? Uh, I'd say like roughly three, three practices a week. From what age to what age? Um, well, probably about six years old to 15 years old. Okay, as a, just as an example of what you can see as far as the activities that kids are involved in. My son, Brayden, is four and a half years old. Um, he started gymnastics when he was age two, and he did that once a week for 45 minutes. He began preschool three days a week, uh, three hours at age three. He began theater classes at Milwaukee Children's Academy one day a week for one and a half hours at age three and a half. He began swimming lessons once a week for 35 minutes since age four. He entered 4K this fall, which is five days a week, three hours a day. And he says so far he wants to take Little League T-ball two to three days a week this summer, about an hour each. Plus, he wants to take judo lessons one day a week for an hour or more in May. Um, this is us um, trying to get him to do some things outside of the house, but it only started with gymnastics and then he kept wanting to add more activities. The funny thing is, even though he wants to add more activities and our schedule is extremely hectic or will be extremely hectic, um, as you can see by this little chart here, it just so happens that when he finishes an activity, um, he says he doesn't want to do it again until the next week. <laughs> and then suddenly he wants to do gymnastics or asks when he's going back to gymnastics. But every week it's kind of follows the same pattern. I don't want to do that anymore. And then all of a sudden he wants to know um, when am I going back. So we're trying to keep up with what he wants and what we want at the same time. So Chris and Lori Dunn, they're a young couple with two sons, ages 8 and 11. And they maintain a hectic family schedule already. Spending summer hours traveling between daycare to Pee Wee football, lacrosse, swimming class, kids club, 4-H, and craft classes for the oldest, and daycare, kids club, 4-H, golf, and swimming classes for the baby of the family. Their boys are rarely unsupervised as they move from one activity to the next. Then there's the advent of the cell phone, and children are confronted with even fewer opportunities to make their own decisions. Why should they when mom or dad is just a phone call away? Some children as young as the age of seven have their own cell phones and can call their parents at any time. Children today are constantly being monitored. Um, my son, Brayden, here he is again. Um, we got him a little privacy tent so he could have some place where he could be private. Um, and this is him in his privacy tent. But also, we also have a Wi-Fi compatible um, baby monitor, as you can see in this picture right here with my husband reading to him. This is... Him, we can look at him at any time when he's in his room, so he knows that we're always watching if he needs something or if he's doing something that he shouldn't be doing, we will see it right away. So, today crime among youth is up. There's an epidemic of ADD and HD, ADHD diagnosed and medicated students seems to be the norm. Students seem at a loss when given little instruction before oh, attempting a task. Oh, ready to pull those bleachers out. Remember, we're supposed to do that. Okay. 